Stanford University. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Opportunity Assessment Project and your weekly updates. First, let's start with the weekly updates. Entrepreneurship is fundamentally an experimentation and search process, as I'll be emphasizing to you throughout the course. A startup is essentially an organization that searches for a repeatable, scalable business model. Once this is found, the startup then scales up into a large organization, and a large established company is primarily executing on an already known business model. So in this class, we want to see evidence of your experimentation and search process. Otherwise, you're not going to get as much out of the class as you could. So we want to have some way to continuously check in on how you're doing in that process. So what I want you to do is set up a blog or use the Lean Launch Lab website or set up a WordPress and document your experimentation throughout the class. As a team, you can use Skype or Google Plus Hangouts for team conversations if you can't all get together in the same place at the same time. This could also be useful for the online students in the class. If you want to get together with teammates who aren't in the same geographic location, you could always use Google Plus or uh, Skype to have a uh, team meeting. Next, you want to try and see if the domain that you're interested in using for your company is available. So you can use products like Domainer or Domize. For web or mobile uh, ideas, I want you to try and build a low fidelity version of the website. There's so many tools available, even if you are not a coder or don't have a coder on your team, you can still use sites like Google Sites or other options to create at least a splash page and the front end user inter interface to the website, even if you can't create the back end of the website yet. So I really want to encourage, especially for the students at Stanford in the class, that if you're going to do a web or a mobile idea, to actually create at least the front end of the product. So you want to start by putting up on your blog that you're going to use to update us each week your business model canvas. So what's a business model canvas? Here we see the various pieces of the business model. So this includes the customers, it also includes um, how you segment those customers, what your value propositions are to the various people you're going to be interacting with, what your revenue stream is going to be, are you a subscription service, are you a one-time payment, how do you actually get paid for the product, so on and so forth. Any changes from the prior week should be highlighted and we basically want to know what are the lessons that you learned week by week. So. For your updates in class, you should be describing, here's what we thought going into the week. Here were our assumptions about this piece of the business model. And here's what we wound up finding. Here's what we actually did to try and test this hypothesis about the business model. And here's what we learned. Next, you want to tell us, what are you going to do next week? As a result of learning this, are you going to um, iterate and change this aspect of the business model or did you find support for your hypothesis and you're going to move on to testing a different aspect of the business model. Emphasis should be on the component of, of the business model that we've been talking about in class. So if that week we covered the um, customer piece or we talked about revenue models, then you should try and test that aspect of the business model. But I'd like you to start out with the customers and testing whether there are people who will actually want to buy this product and to get some estimate of who they are and how many of them are there out there. And so if you use the Lean uh, Launch Lab website, you're going to see something like this where you can actually you can actually see the canvas and put in what is your first hypothesis about key partners. And this initial hypothesis might turn out to be wrong, and so then you might learn that it's actually bloggers or journalists who are a key partner. Or what your initial thoughts on what the value proposition is. And this canvas will allow you to keep track of all the various pieces of the business model, the cost structure or the channels that you're using to reach the customer. And you can record your progress week by week and see what you've learned and uh, we can also see as the teaching team what updates you've made. Uh, product also allows you to put in notes and blog style posts as you test your various um, hypotheses about the business model. So next the OAP projects. Let's talk about that for a second. So this is the opportunity assessment project. 
And here your task is going to be to identify and define a market opportunity and pitch your classmates, uh, VC and angel investors who we're going to bring into the class and the teaching team on this idea. Should be a five minute presentation and you should have about five slides. We also want to see a three page write up where you discuss the concept, market size, customers, business model, uh, in terms of what your hypotheses are and the competition. The emphasis should be in this part on the customers and testing the market size, whether people actually want to buy this product and whether they buy your value proposition. These are going to be due on the morning of January 31st, so you should send them in to us by 9 a.m. on January 31st, and you should also get feedback from your mentors ahead of your presentation. For the online students, doing these OAP presentations is not required. There's no way that we can possibly grade all of the thousands of them. But if you do them, then they will improve your learning. So I encourage you to go through the exercise. You can upload a presentation or a video file of you presenting somewhere on the web, and then go to the forum and post a link to this presentation or video file. You should then vote on other students' presentations, and through this process, the presentations with the top five number of votes will receive extra credit in the course. This is one example of the type of feedback and the judging criteria that we're looking at for students in the uh, course here at Stanford. So you're going, the criteria we're looking at are, um, did the team accurately and clearly articulate their concept? Could you understand the customer need they were addressing? Uh, did they clearly articulate what the problem is that the customer has that's being solved with this product? Did they get outside the building and actually talk to real people about this idea? Could you understand the business model, at least the initial hypotheses? Did they talk about the target market? Uh, potential competitors and potential risks that they're facing. So here was an example where we gave some feedback that they determined that the overall size of the target market was 5.8 billion, which is kind of unbelievably large. And so we felt that they didn't really narrow down enough on what portion of that market would actually be the target market and use the product. And so um, this was largely our feedback to the team. They did meet with some potential users in person, but we felt like they had narrowed down too quickly on a particular target market segment and also didn't entirely explain why they had narrowed down on this 30 to 50 year old parent market, why this age bracket as opposed to others. Um, and so we want to see justification for why this is the target market and also some data that shows that you've really narrowed down on the piece of the overall broader market that's actually going to buy. We'll talk more about this in the marketing uh, class. So once you've built at least a low fidelity basic version of the site, you want to start showing this to potential customers. And uh, you can also test out this value proposition by using Google AdWords, Facebook ads, or any other way that you can test out of the number of people who went and looked at the site, how many seemed to be interested, how many were willing to provide an email address to get further updates. You can also use your network or LinkedIn um, to find potential target customers. Ask them, do you know someone with this problem? If so, can you forward on the link to this website to them? Or can you put me in touch with them? If it's a business to business product, you could use Twitter, Twitter Quora, or LinkedIn. Um, to find target customers. You don't want to spam, but if you can at least target a group of these um, and get some information on what percentage is interested, that will help you. You could also use MailChimp, Postmark, Google Groups, or create online surveys with Wufu, Zoomerang, or Qualtrics to try and get more information about your target customer segment. So these are examples of Wufu, which is a survey site that you can use, and also Google Sites to create a basic version of your website. So your website can be as simple as, as just a splash page that gives your value proposition, a summary of benefits from using the product, 
um, perhaps a short survey and a call to action such as leaving an email address to learn more. For non-coders, you could even make just a quick prototype of how the site would look in PowerPoint. Or you could use uh, sites like Google Sites, Weebly, GoDaddy, WordPress. These can all enable even people with very minimal coding skills to create a basic website. And so I want to um, pause here and show you a quick video um, about the importance of business models. So again, this is on the eCorner website. This is Ann Mira Co, who's a founding partner at Floodgate. And she's going to be talking about why business models matter. I believe that at this stage of development, the seed stage for a company, it's the business model that matters, not the business plan. So send me a 50-page business plan, I probably won't read it. But send me a picture of your business model and all the hypotheses that you have around your business model and I'll take a really good look. And the reason why that's really important is that business models will enable you to understand exactly what your assumptions are. And there are a lot of diagrams that we've put out that show what my, my version of business model diagram looks like. And Steve has that on his blog. Alexander Osterwalder also has a book on business model generation. And so there are different frameworks now that exist out there where you can use them to figure out what your business model looks like. The business model is then really, really important because what we have our startups do is they'll go through each component of a business model. In my mind, those would be your users, your customers, your pricing, which also includes your customer lifetime, how you do customer demand creation, your sales channel, and then on the back end, if you're producing something or if you have inventory, your whole supply chain. That could include all your components, design, manufacturing, and inventory warehousing. You should have assumptions around your entire business model of how you relate to all these different entities in your ecosystem. How do the customers view you? What's your value proposition to them? What's your value proposition to the manufacturers? What's your value proposition to the sales channel? How do you do demand creation? What's the cost of customer acquisition? These are all questions that you should be constantly thinking about. And if the dollars in are not greater than the dollars out, then you need to rethink your business model right then and there. So there's a lot more about the um, steps to create a web startup on Steve Blank's blog, which is a great resource, so I encourage you to check it out. So that's it for today. I've given you a little bit of information about the weekly updates that we expect from you and also about the Opportunity Assessment Project. So I wanted to also show you a couple of examples of past Opportunity Assessment Projects that have been done in the class. So this is from a startup called freelunch.com that some of the students created. And so they start with an opportunity that's about students and um, bringing them together with group events. They give us a couple of nice quotes that point out the problem. Um, so they say that the main goal is to achieve high attendance at student group events. And they give this one quote, although good old-fashioned flyering is really effective, the time has come where it need, there needs to be a new marketing platform. And so they're trying to explain that the problem is students letting other students know about the events they're hosting on campus. We get a market analysis that starts with all colleges and all student groups. So that's about 15.9 million. They then narrow this down to the Stanford population nearby community, and then their target market being Stanford undergraduate students and student groups. And so they estimate this to be worth about 2.4 million per year, which is not a whole lot, but we'll talk more about that later. They give a few potential revenue streams that could come from caterers or from group budgets or from college retailers. 
they did a bit of market research, so this is good. They surveyed over 130 students, which isn't bad, and got the percentages that wanted to know more about on-campus events, that were more likely to attend event, an event if food is served, and that are more likely to seek out an event if information about such events were available on the website. So this tells us a little bit about the um, needs of the target market. I wish it was a bit more detailed and had asked a bit more specific questions. They talk a little bit about the competition. So sites like Eventbrite or Gowalla or Looped. And then they have a brief model of, of the business model that talks about the link between students, advertisers, and student groups. And that's it. So overall, it's not too bad. They've done some analysis of the market size and some survey, some survey data. Let's take a look at another one. So this is a startup called DriveSmart that wants to address the problem of how do I drive more efficiently. And so why is this a problem due to rising gas prices or trying to protect the environment? They talk about their product and marketing, which is going to be a smartphone application that collects driving data and compares you with other drivers. They want to integrate this with social media. So they've done some research on the market. They've narrowed it down from the total number of drivers in the US to just those drivers who have smartphones and then further narrow that down to those who are 18 to 35 years old who they think are more likely to adopt this mobile application. They then give a brief overview of the business model, um, including channels that they want to go through, potential partners, a little bit about their pricing. It looks like they want to use a freemium model and then um, briefly touched on the revenue stream. But as you can see, graphically, we can't really tell a whole lot about what's going on in this business model, and so we were relying on what they were saying in class. That was basically their presentation. So these weren't bad, but I would have really liked to see more detail on how they did the research behind the overall market size, and we'll talk more about this in the marketing class. I also would have liked to have seen a lot more detail on did they actually talk to customers? What was their feedback? Some more data from those um, personal interactions with customers would have really improved these, as well as a fuller set of hypotheses on the rest of the aspects of the business model. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.